with us, the author of In Trump We Trust, E Pluribus Awesome. What's up, Madam Coulter? How are you? Uh, fine, thanks. I'm a little disturbed by the uselessness of Republicans in Congress. Ah, you and me both. Have you heard me ranting about it? No. Um, now, what does that mean? They be impeaching this Judge Ropart immediately. What are they doing over there? This is really, uh, I don't think people understand how outrageous this is. There is absolutely no question but that the President of the United States has the authority to exclude um, anyone, anyone he wants, including permanent residents, I might add, though that's not what this order does um, and and what you played at the beginning there with the judge you know getting into the policy behind what you see on TV of well but are they really that dangerous okay well besides the fact that factually um, these are the seven countries designated by the Obama administration under Secretary of State Hillary Clinton as terrorist nations or as the State Department began to call that under Madeleine Albright countries of particular concern these were the seven countries designated um, by Obama and Hillary Clinton um, this is a, a, a two-month ban um, or three-month, whatever it is, um, pause so we can figure out how to let them in. The idea that a federal judge would come in and start nitpicking over, over what the facts are, and by the way, in the process, getting the facts wrong, um, as you know and probably all your listeners know by now, there have been um, what, what, dozens of attacks by people from every one of these seven countries, some I've written about um, in the past few years, or not, not attacks by um, terrorist convictions um, at a minimum. That's not only an arrest, that's a conviction. For 200 years, the Supreme Court has said over and over and over again, the power to exclude aliens is completely in the control of the pre President of the United States as an extension of foreign policy. And one case that, that I wrote about, I was surprised no one else was mentioning um, in, in my column last week, is, hey, Everybody remember Elian Gonzalez? The Clinton administration policy was to, you know, it was an extension of their love for, for Stalin and, and Alger Hiss. We have to send this kid back to a communist dictatorship. We have to send him back. And it didn't want, the administration didn't want to admit that. So first they tried deporting Elian as a matter of a child's custody case. And all the, the Clinton officials were saying, oh no, this isn't our responsibility. It's just up to the Florida courts on, on child custody. Well, the Florida courts under proper child custody laws, I might add, said, no, Elian gets to to stay in Miami. Um, okay, so um, Clinton administration goes back to the drawing board. Then they say, well, Elian has applied for asylum, um, but you can't apply for asylum if you're only six years old. That goes to the courts. And again, the courts find, um, actually, there's no age restriction here, Mr. President. So then, how does the Clinton administration force Elian to go back to Cuba? By saying, this is our policy. And at that point, the federal appellate courts in Florida, and you can read the decisions, say, um, look, we'll, we'll concede. Elian will be, may well be subjected to re-education, to political persecution, to living in a horrible communist dictatorship, but ha-ha, this is the policy of the president, our hands are tied. So when the policy of the president is to promote international communism, the courts step back and, and wash their hands of it. No, this is political branches. Um, and, and in the Arizona case, um, under, under Obama, Arizona didn't want to enforce any laws beyond what the federal law was. No, they just said, our state is being overwhelmed with illegal aliens. We want to have our law enforcement officers simply enforce written laws on the books Signed, signed by the president, um, you know, passed by both houses of Congress, and the Supreme Court found, at least for those provisions of the law, no, you can't. If the president's policy is, we're not enforcing federal immigration law, you have to stand down, states. That's how powerful this, this principle of constitutional law, that the president controls who comes in, who doesn't come in, how to enforce immigration laws. This is a political matter. The court's I mean, literally going back to the Chinese exclusion cases, probably before that, have said over and over again, this is part of foreign policy, making treaties, excluding foreigners. And if the foreigners being excluded, if the leaders of their governments have a problem with that, they deal with the president. You know what's amazing, and, and I love your, your legal mind because you are able to add that context and texture to your comments, and I think it's appropriate, but the Constitution is very clear. Judicial activists on the Ninth Circuit or this guy in Seattle did not have the role as commander-in-chief. The law, which is, you know, is there's no ambiguity whatsoever, 8 U.S.C. 1182, and 
Uh, you've heard it, and I've, I've read it many times on the program. I won't do it now. But if the president finds that the entry of any alien or class of aliens into the U.S. is detrimental, he has full and complete authority to take steps to protect the American people. And for me, and it comes down to a simple question. Are we willing to inconvenience a few visitors, and it's only going to be a few, for the safety and security of the American people, or are we just going to be so politically correct we'll gamble with the lives of Americans when we know there's an enemy that wants to destroy us? Well, I think it ought to be a lot more than a few. I think that is the result, the reason for this election. The public has been begging for less immigration overall. Forget the ones from, from the countries designated by, by a Hillary Clinton State Department as terrorist countries. For decades now, you ask Americans whether, do you want immigration to stay the same, go up, or be reduced? Nobody wants it to go up, and I believe it's been a consistent majority saying, no, fewer, fewer, fewer immigrants we've taken, and enough, America needs a break. We have taken, as I describe in Adios America, um, for the past several decades, America has taken in more refugees than the entire rest of the world combined. Our country is not a battered woman's shelter. We're not here to take in all the charity cases of the world. This was the point of this election. Please help us, the American people, including immigrants who have come in. Stay the right there. i got to take a break. First. We're going to hold you over. Ann Coulter is with us and always shy in her opinions. 800-941-SHAWN, toll-free telephone number if you want to be a part of the program. And as we continue with uh, Ann Coulter, 800-941-SHAWN, if you want to be a part of the program. You mentioned earlier about Republicans, and, you know, isn't it beyond any comprehension that they don't have a consensus replacement plan for Obamacare, that they're talking about, well, maybe they'll get to the president's economic plan when you have all these people out of work, in poverty, and on food stamps. Well, maybe we'll get to it in the spring. Maybe it'll be in the summer or the fall. And I'm like, okay, Donald Trump has done more in three weeks than most presidents accomplish in any given two years, at least. Why can't they keep up? Why are they so far behind? Why are there article, is there article after article saying, well, we're not sure if we really want to replace it now, when they voted 50 times when it was meaningless to replace it? No, I know. What exactly is the House of Representatives doing? I mean, the Senate, not that it, it requires their, their undivided attention. They do have to pass uh, Trump's nominees. But what has the House been, are all the House members doing just having lunch every day? What is going on over there? Um, and would like to be no, they're, able to buy they're eating in our cafeterias that we pay for and the gyms that we pay for. And would like to be able to buy an insurance plan that, that will provide um, cancer coverage. I'm really sick of this. Oh, we may, we may not get to it. And, and by the way, I think what is what the holdup is, I could be wrong, um, but Trump, God bless him, um, was the first Republican in an awful long time to say, no, I'm not cutting Social Security, I'm not cutting Medicaid. Um, forget this entitlement reform. And I agree with him. Americans have paid into it. And the reason these programs are being bankrupted is that we keep dumping millions of poor people on the country who instantly access Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. That's why the programs are bankrupt. So, um, hey, Paul Ryan, instead of cutting back on my social security and my medicare and and completely um destroying health insurance with obamacare how about how about you stop signing up uh, poverty-stricken foreigners for these programs that's point one that is not what obamacare is but they seem to be associating obamacare as if it's one of these uh, entitlements and obviously trump was popular in saying no i'm going to save these i'm going to get the economy um going i'm going to um stop dumping poor people on the country and deport a whole bunch of them i'm hoping um um, you know, illegal aliens, 71% of illegal aliens are on government assistance. 71%. Until that number is zero, I don't want to hear about how government assistance programs for Americans have to be cut back and the retirement age raised and so on and so forth. No, no, no. This is this is your job. This is what got Trump elected. But they've got to stop thinking of Obamacare as something that is, that is the same as Social Security. Moreover, they're so frustrating, these Republicans. Do they have no sense of drama and theater? They need to find people probably more sympathetic than me. But there are a lot of them out there who have had their health insurance destroyed by Obamacare. Get young couples who are both self-employed, who can no longer, um, who are paying massive premiums and cannot be treated by any doctor who went to an American medical school. I know they're busy. They're busy working. you got to get them before Congress. They ought to be calling doctors who will tell you, as any doctor will, 40% of, of, of all the money spent on, on health care, 40%, 40 cents on a dollar goes to defensive medicine to protect themselves from the trial lawyers. We want tort reform. Real quick, um, we're running out of time. But listen, Anna And we want to buy health insurance on the free market. The hard cases, as Trump said from the beginning, that's a different case. Don't worry.
salary. You'll be paid for. But we don't have time to fly to Washington and protest and lobby and no, we're working. Have our exactly to pay for the Ill- the health insurance of illegal aliens and the education and the criminal justice system. We pay for it all. And always good to have you. I miss seeing you. Hope we'll uh, hopefully we'll get to you get you back when you're in New York. Let me know. Okay. Great to okay, talk to you. Okay. Good to talk to you, Sean. Bye bye. All right, Andy.